Thank you all very much for coming out tonight. It, I'm quite astonished how many of you have braved a cold winter's night. And can I just ask, first of all, how many people here have seen the Auroras before? Okay, I would judge that about a third of the people here, okay? How many of you have seen them in the UK? Okay, that's most of you again. And how many of those have seen them in the last two years? Okay, the number dropped there a little bit. Okay. I fell in love with auroras 12 years ago. I was a student at the University of St. Andrews, and word got around that conditions would be very good that night for seeing auroras. Together with a group of friends, I went down to the West Sands Beach, and we laid ourselves down on the cold sand to look up at the night sky. As our eyes adjusted to the darkness, we started to see more and more stars, and then our eyes began to pick out green lights in the sky. At first they were to the north, and we could see them along the horizon. As we watched, they came closer until they were right overhead, and we felt surrounded by these ethereal, supernatural dancing lights. They changed minute to minute, and during the best moments, parts of them seemed to switch on and off. We could make out individual rays within these. We lay there for as long as we could until the cold October night chilled us so much we had no choice but to go back and t warm ourselves up again. But it was an evening that had a profound impression on me. It's something that suddenly left a very enchanting memory and has in fact shaped some of my career choices to become a space scientist. So for those of you who haven't seen them yet, I very much hope that you will get your chance soon. Auroras are usually an Arctic phenomenon. They occur regularly in northern Scandinavia. You can then follow a band across kind of Iceland through northern Canada and into Alaska. Um, events down here are much rarer. The odds are not too bad if you're up in Orkney. Caith Ness does quite well. Aurora doesn't do as well as Caith Ness, but still better than us, and then we start to come in. We do do a lot better than the south of England, though. The good news, though, is that for reasons I will try to explain, I think that this winter gives us some of the best chances we've had this decade for seeing auroras, and what's going to be, I think, some of the best chances for quite a few years to come yet. Uh, to explain why I'm optimistic about just now, um, I'd like to share a little bit of the science of auroras and explore well, what are auroras and what has to happen for us to see them. I'll also give a little bit of insight into the science of them and how people try to predict them. So let's discuss what causes these kind of astronomical lights. The colour of an aurora gives us a clue as to how it's being formed. The green light that's most commonly associated with an aurora is associated with oxygen. It tells us that somewhere high in our atmosphere, between 90 kilometres and 150 kilometres altitude, <coughs> right at the very edge of space, the tenuous atmosphere that's left up there, it's glowing. Something is giving it energy and making it create a light. The effect is actually in kind of physical ways, quite similar to what happens inside a plasma ball. Inside a plasma ball we have um, some gas, and when you plug it in, there's a voltage which drives charged particles through that gas and makes it glow. For the plasma ball I have here, that colour is a purple. For auroras, you get a um, green glow of oxygen, a rarer colour that you can also see comes from a bit higher up, between about 150 and maybe three to 500 kilometres. You can see a red as well. And very rarely, you can sometimes see a purple or a blue. And that's associated not with oxygen, but with nitrogen. Now for the plasma ball, the gas is glowing because we're driving charged particles through it with a voltage. We've sent satellites and we've flown rockets to pass through auroras. 
and we've measured what's happening up there, and it's the same kind of thing. Charged particles, this time coming from space. But you need a voltage to drive them. And this is happening on a planetary scale, in a large circle that sweeps all the way around the Earth. And to have such a powerful driver, you need a very powerful object. And in this case, it's the Sun. 